Interesting things coming out when they start talking to like actual, actual experiencers, you know? Yeah. Well, John Mack was a psychologist, Dr. John Mack, that, you know, did multiple yeah. research on experiencers. And he talked about one was like evidence. One of them said that the experiencers, uh, they gave him a wand and the wand never appeared because they wanted to see it. But John Mack never saw the wand. And now I want to see the wand when I heard that, because that was like the evidence this experiencer had. But the interesting thing at the end of, you know, working with all of these people as patients, uh, John Mack, you know, really did believe in what happened. You know, he really was a believer in the experiencer. And he was a psychologist. He was ridiculed for a very long time about it too. And, and to this day, people, you know, they would, they laughed at him in psychology and didn't take him seriously. And now it's changing a little bit. So I think we are going to learn more in science. You know, John Mack was probably pointing to certain things that were shedding light on way before the time. And I think, I think we'll be around to know. And I think experiencers will have a different say and their time will come and, you know, you do have to give space, even though for them it's real. And I think that's the most important thing is this is massive trauma. And so it's not always mental health going into it. Sometimes it is because, yeah. you know, mental health does play a part in that. Um, but even if one experience has happened, it's, it's makes it real. Right. So, you know, John Mack said that the experience for these people were not so much um, the mental health was not before the mental health came after the trauma of the experience yep. yes. and then the mental health showed up because of the trauma. And I felt that was really interesting. And so you have to give space to these people if it's mental health or not. I think you have to give space to experiencers. You need to listen to their stories. We need to document them, you know, have a place for them to talk about it because we don't really know what's going on and give them a space that's safe. And then also look at it with scientists and different people in, in, in different perspectives. Yeah. So I think we're going towards that. And I think the best part right now, like with Robert Bigelow's doing and a lot of different people that are working in the UFO community and with mainstream media now is giving the ability that scientists are actually going to be able to come in and look at ufology and experiencers and all these different phenomenons in a really academic way that we've never been able to do for the past 75 years. <laughs> Thank you.